I ended up getting about two grand back date from ESA. Mm. And he come running to me saying he's in trouble, he's got guys after him, blah, 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 blah. Took like this two grand off me to go and pay these guys off. It was all a blag, he just basically robbed me while I was already on my ass and homeless. I was about to use that money for a deposit. What a life journey I've been through, the less you experience it, you ain't gonna clue. Believe me when I tell you it's not for the faint hearted. Not a surprise, a lot of my friends a long time ago departed. <laughs> so you're doing what? Right, so. Mic's good, yeah? Happy with the mics and that? Yeah. yeah. Just with that, it's up for you. Um, started writing a song last night. Yeah. Um, called The Imposter in Me. Um, started writing a little chorus of it, which is, now you got it wrong, I'm Lucy Lawless, check it, I'm flawless. So right now you see, I'm a lion that's rawless. Nice, see what you did there. A lion yeah. that's rawless. So what, where did the, um, so the anxiety? Yeah, that's what it's about. So that, that the lion that's rawless is yeah. my anxiety. Okay. Because me right, persona of Lucy Lawless has took over. See, that's good writing that. That's yeah. like, that's when you get, um, do they call it like metaphors and wordplay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People can't do I that. I love wordplay. Do you suffer with anxiety bad? I get anxiety sometimes. Yeah, really bad. Stage when I was doing radio last week, it was really bad as well. Okay. And I couldn't even duck out because it was live. I had to sit it through, which was worse. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I was like, it's I want like to go out the room, I want to go out the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like this, is it, where you think we can edit bits out on the radio? I've been on the radio myself, and I remember the first time I went on, and I thought, like, right, going on in three, two, one, it's like, right, guys, we've got Sam's on the show. It's like, how are you doing, Sam? Um, uh, 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 I'm, I'm all right, mate, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's horrible, isn't it? It is, it is. It's a horrible thing. So with the music, what got you into it? Because you talk a lot about, like, your life and your experiences, obviously, because you send me a lot of voice notes and spoken word. So take us back. Where did it come from? Um, First of all, I liked doing poetry when I was back in high school and that. And then dropped off from that. And then when, when I became homeless, I started writing poetry again as a way to get me feelings out rather than walk around a little tiny angry person. Oh, that's fair. So um, from there, this year I decided to take it a step further and do my music production course yeah. and start producing my own tracks and putting my lyrics on them. And you use going back like them hard times being and that's what I'm using my lyrics from all my hard times and like basically my life journey so mm. my first EP is going to be about my life journey oh, right. that's, that's interesting. so my second one's going to be specifically it. about homelessness yeah. and my third one's going to be about like foster care okay so I want to get those subjects out there because they're never talked about in the industry whatsoever no yeah I get you so it's going to be two projects one on homelessness one on foster care so with the homelessness like how old was you when you first like experienced that? Um, age thirty, um, fleeing domestic violence. Fleeing domestic violence. So um, while my kids dad was in prison, I'd been with him fifteen years. Okay. Uh, took the opportunity to just basically pack my bags and go before he came out of prison. Mm, um, it's a pretty hard decision to do, but it took me seven years to get through the system as well. So, so it's not like, it. uh, yeah, I've got through it, but it's not like when the uh, city council turn around and say to you, right, well, we, you're going to be, you're going to be doing hostile hostel system within about three months, and then six months, eight months. Before you know it, you're, you're, just, you're just trapped in the system. Yeah, it's hard to break it, isn't it, once you're in it? It's like you're there to stay. Yeah. And obviously, again, like you say, anxiety, all these other mental health issues. You can't be like, you can't wake up in a great mood, like. Do you know what I mean? Especially like, not, not in a hostel when you've got another 31 women and you've got about 16 of them are alcoholics, 10 of them are drug addicts, and three of them are nutcases. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's 32 women in a hostel, and I didn't want to want to know 31 of them. Yeah. Which is why I started writing my lyrics and just keeping myself to myself in my room. It's mad as well because with hostels, I feel like I also chatted to someone a bit back, a homeless guy, funny enough, and what he said to me was, I seen him, I was working away, and I seen this fella sat outside McDonald's. And he, 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 he looked pretty well dressed and whatnot. And he sat there and he's, he had an iPhone and whatnot. I said, why, why are you sat here, mate? And he was like, reason, he said he's homeless, but the reason he's homeless, he chose to be, what he told me was um, he got into drugs and started doing whatever to fund his habits. But beforehand, sorry, beforehand, he was quite successful. He worked and whatnot, but he got into drugs, start, lost his job, started taking drugs, uh, stealing to, you know, to feed his habits, went to jail, and when he got out, 
he, so he's got clear in jail. And when he's got out, they've put him in a hostel amongst loads of drug addicts, loads of ex-offenders. A lot of them are, you know, getting back into drugs. Reoccurring offenders, you know, they've got, it's just a back, it's that cycle, it's isn't it? That said, cycle, yeah. I'm actually clean, and he said, the amount of people that was still on drugs in there, the, the, it's a losing battle, he said, because just because I'm off them, that's always on my mind. It's like a battle every day. I want to take them, of course I do. I have good days and bad days. So he said, so my thing is, I'd rather be homeless and know that I've got less chance of going back on drugs than be in that hostel and then and then basically just mess up his life. And I thought that was kind of... Yeah, it, that it, is it, very it's, deep. It's deep, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, it's very wow. deep. And then he, he went on to talk about the system and whatnot. Um, but yeah, and then obviously he said um, he's trying to find work. So I basically, I just gave him a number and said if he could get a CSCS card. I'd happily get you know get him on site with me. I never heard from him again, to be honest. I don't know what happened to the lad, but hopefully, you know, it's, it's well not, it's for not me a when thing. for me when I was going through the system and that um, fed um, domestic violence, went homeless, went into homelessness with just anxiety and depression, and came out with PTSD because I've seen three people die in front of me. Oh really? Uh -huh. oh. Two of them committed suicide, okay. and one of them was murdered in the night. Murdered in the night. Murdered in the night by a heroin addict. This is what I mean. It's it's crazy in them places, isn't it? And it's it's like I feel like things that happen in jail, but in jail there's um people are up to what they're up to. It's the same environment. An hostel, a lot of the hostels is ex offenders. So you've got the same batch of people from the prison now in an hostel, but the difference of an hostel, there's no one there to keep their eye on anyone. They're just sort of in there waiting to go into go get a job or whatnot and get the only thing you get is like a curfew you've, you've got to be in by one or you lose your hostel placement yeah. so the way i view it is like cat dj cat dj yeah it is it's literally, it's literally like, like cat dj i've been in one myself when i when i went to prison years ago i come in a, in a hostel when i got out i hated it in there hated it it was it, it's just not a nice place it was dirty it was you know what i mean like it was it, it just wasn't a nice place that's it why was cleaner and nicer in jail, if I'm being honest. I didn't yeah. really didn't want to be in there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, you come home to go back to jail. It's like, I'm here now. Yeah, so, true. But yeah. that's why I, when I met you guys, when I was in the hostel system, and I was coming to music video shoots and coming to, remember when we were doing the Facebook Lives? Yeah, they were yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sparks 303, did the yeah, call it. Remember yeah, yeah. of our friend when Sparks, rest in peace, Sparks, great guy, great DJ. That's when, when we first started meeting. That's when it? we first started meeting up yeah. and everything, yeah. But, um... My excuse for that was it was basically just getting me out of the hostel for as long as I possibly could. Yeah. So I was just basically going there to sleep and then I was back out again for being, you know, chilling with you guys, doing flipping Facebook lives and whatnot. Well, with you enjoyed Mac and lock up so and like you said, Sparks, rest in peace. Again. For you, for you, that was probably a great feeling as well, wasn't it? Because like I know how excited you used to get over the videos. You're always dancing. If you see a lot of our videos, guys, you'll see us dancing her head off in the back, shuffling. <laughs> He's the of attention. You can't bring stop you, me, I just please. somehow end up in the background yeah. of the video. We need you in Even the when video. I'm not supposed to be there. Well, that's a good thing, like, at that time, it's probably it's nice to have, like, because did you have, like, many friends and that in and out of hostel? Because you must lose a lot of contact with a lot of people along the way as well over the years moving around. When I went homeless, I literally cut everyone off okay. from the area I went homeless from, which is Wibbenshaw and started afresh but then when um, I come out of homelessness um, about 80% of the people I knew are cut out because they were still in the hostel system and I've seen so many people that have come out of the hostel system got their own gaff invited loads of people around from the hostel system I have wild parties six months later they're back in the hostel system mm. because they've been evicted and I'm like oh, I'm not going to play that game so going back to the anxiety obviously because there's a lot of anxiety around this hostile environment and whatnot, as we can tell, as you've been seeing. Like, what was your first experience of anxiety? Like, can, can, you, can you, do you remember? Um, as a kid, um, I used to be a championship dancer. Oh, um, that says a lot, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> um, in my younger years, so from about age four to about age 13, really? 14. See, that's something I never knew about you. Ah, you like to every day, so yeah. now you know why I can dance so well. Yeah, you can dance. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so when before going on to arenas or stage areas, I started getting nervous and started throwing up and everything. Oh, really? So that was so my was first experience. Deep? So I've got a lot better with anxiety over the years mm. because back then I was literally throwing up before going on stage, throwing up, coming up coming off the stage as well. Oh, I've bit through my tongue during a performance and I've got like a slice of my tongue now. Wow. So like that's, it's mad because 
you say in that, like a lot of people suffer with anxiety. We all do. I get from time to time, time, time I've told you I, I hate being on stage. I've got it now. You've probably got it now. Not as much if it's just us two, but social anxiety, I think they call it, I get it around crowds. But what I'm getting at is that there, what you've just said, it's so anxiety could literally caught so many people in progression like someone could have a great time like you look you, you in, from an early age you used to say you couldn't have gone on to like great things with your dancing but having that level of anxiety it would literally could halt someone's career it could stop them doing what they want to do it could do you know what i'm saying a lot of people have got so many talents that's uh, the older i got in my teens yeah. the more the, ang like, the anxiety was getting worse and that then it did it stopped me from so it's progressing. just halted you and you pro it's sad really isn't it and it's nice that you touched on that because if you might get a lot of like you know upcoming artists slash dancers watching this and i did go back to dancing for a while as an adult in the early 20s yeah. and came second in um championships back in 2012. yeah and then i broke yeah. me flip it, well fractured my knee in two places and had to quit no for good so did that again that probably plays on your mind now though in terms of anxiety would you say like you have any coping mecha mechanisms like if someone was watching this now are you because i know you still suffer with it is there anything that you could do where someone watching might think i'm gonna try that i'll apply that like how do you deal with it best coping mechanism that i've been told about recently and to use to my advantage is my whole like my stage name which is lucy lawless oh and um, create a whole new persona for that I know you so when anxiety creeps in you're actually sat there like Lucy Lawless who? I mean Lucy Lawless who? Right, okay. So you're like Harley Quinn. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. So my anxiety me. my anxiety person, you know, is it's the real me. Yeah. And then my confident person's Lucy Lawless, Lucy Lawless, which is what I'm gonna be writing a track about. You mentioned that to me yesterday. I think that whoever said that to you, I think that's a really good way of looking at it, because you can literally have a conversation with yourself. You step out, I've got a job to do. And so supposing, uh, and do you know what's the saddest thing about anxiety? Literally, a lot of it is just, it's, it's, it's just a mental head. thing. You, it's, it's, it's you against you. And it's like, you yeah. can literally tell yourself, not today, mate, back up. Because like you say, with the dancing, he was a great dancer. Why have I got anxiety? Crowd's going to go wild. I'm good at what I do. I'm out here smashing events, winning awards and whatnot. Why, why do I get anxiety when I know I can go out there and perform as well as I do? It's, it's, it's sad really, isn't it? It is. It is, and it is all with it's all in your mind yeah it is literally in your mind the way i f the way i view it it's like having two stuffed animals in in your mind kicking the fuck out of each other <laughs> <laughs> two stuffed animals kicking one's the confidence and one's anxiety yeah <laughs> that's a good way to look at it so with the you said before as well um you know like you took yourself out of that environment with was it the house parties and whatnot and you cut ties with a lot of people why why did you do that like I just didn't want to fall into the trap of going back into the hostel system. It took me seven years to get out of it. And seeing so many people making that mistake, I was like, I'm not going to be one of those people. Yeah. And a lot of the people in the hostel system are drug addicts and alcoholics and that. And I wanted a fresh, clean start and clean slate, new chapter in my life. I didn't want to be, you know, bringing all the party scene with me and everything. Yeah, because like you say, it does. It just gets you evicted from houses. You want to be sat next. To, you want to live next to someone that moves in. Do you know what I mean? And the like, music all night, house parties. I mean, you, we all like to have. We like to party occasionally, but I suppose you have to be mindful of who's, who you live next to, and when you're just moving in and just. Especially when, hell, you, innit? especially when your council are putting you on a random council estate. Yeah. I mean, no, no one on council estates tolerates that shit these days. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not like council estates in the movies back in the day where they're all, it's like, that's a council estate, <laughs> a house <laughs> party, it's a great vibe. Yeah, it's not. It's not no, it's not like that no more. So, um, you said earlier as well, off camera, um, you've got, you've got kids. Yep. You don't mention them much. Uh, I've got three. Three girls. Three girls. I've 17, 18, and 22. I've seen one of them on your Facebook, and she looks a double of you. <laughs> she wears glasses. I knew straight away in the picture. You must have put a picture on, but that's, that's a double. <laughs> um, Everyone says that, and I still don't see it. No, yeah, you can definitely see it. You're the double of her. So, how, how old are they? What's their ages of them? Um, 17, 18, and 22. 17, 18, and 22. 22, she's quite old. She's a big girl. How old are you? <laughs> 37 37 so are you still with the are you with the um the dads or? no no um the oldest one the 22 year old 
has her own dad, um, split up with him while I was pregnant with her, and the youngest two um, I split up with him about eight years ago. Okay, so he's one of them that the fellow he was talking about earlier. Yeah. With the domestic abuse. You want to touch on that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So relationship started out pretty great, like every relationship, and then about eighteen months down the line, got into a bad argument and basically got shown the fist. And then the, 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 the first excuse, which I've got to say this now, as soon as you hear it, women, run. Run like the wind. Mm. I'm sorry, it'll never happen again. Yeah, the first time they say that, I've seen so many podcasts and women's stories, like the first time, like <laughs> it's going great, and then the one time, and then it's like a, yep, the it, habits, the habit yep. kicks in. And then about three months down the line, it happens again, happens again, and it, it went on for like 15 years in total, got really bad. Like having plates smashed all over my head. Really? Um, um, he's actually pointed a gun at me. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. So did all this be start out just quite small and become yeah, more Yeah, started more off frequent. quite quite small, became more frequent and stuff. Um, he had a, an alcohol problem himself. When he went to prison, he ended up getting clean. And now he's got his like own house and own car and everything. So he kept to his promises from when we were younger. But I decided to walk away because I didn't want to take his word for it in case when he come out of prison, he was still the same guy. And it's probably easier to walk away when you get taken away because you've got sort of time to sort of reflect, meet your choices. Because a lot of women, I think, I can't speak for them because obviously I'm, I'm, a, I'm a male, um, as you can see, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it must be hard. Like I've spoke to people in the past and it must, I think it's harder when you're there and they're around because a lot of women, they can't get away because they won't let them. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? So when he gets taken away, you can sort of like, right, now's the time to get over him and move forward. But again, it just because somebody beats the shit out of you, a lot of women are attached. They still love yeah. them, which is mad. It's like some emotional attachment. But that's what I mean. The advantage of being sad. taken to jail made that bond break. Yeah. And, you and my, when... I went homeless, um, I decided to put my children with his mum rather than put them through the system with me. No, that was a bold choice, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that. I ended up losing like all the high school years, I put my kids with his mum like when they were 10, 11, and they're now mm. the youngest one's now 17, so I missed everything through high school because I was homeless. Mm. Um, do you think having kids with him sort of gives you more courage to say this I need to leave yeah you didn't make it easier do you think if you didn't have kids with him you might have stayed a lot longer than you did do you think he could have blagged you like a lot of guys do in jail when they get home babe mm, be yeah it was more be because different. I had the kids was the reason why I stayed so long mm. was I was di like desperate to try and make things work yeah oh yeah because you want the family it, vibe keep, you want keep to have a dad yeah which a lot of people do which is a fair point but it, would they witness in this they were witnessing it then uh, they're aware of like what went on back then. M me and my daughters have spoke about it and stuff. Um, so with that, like, how is the relationship now with you and your children? With my oldest child, who's 22, um, I had her adopted at a young age. But with the two, with the father that we're speaking of, um, I have a great relationship with my youngest one. And my middle child still sort of blames me for a lot of what went wrong between me and, me and her dad. Okay. But it was my oldest one that actually witnessed quite a lot more than the youngest one did, mm. despite them only being 11 months age difference. Okay. So, so, the, so, you do, so she does sort of feel like she has a, some form of resentment towards you, do you think? A little bit, but what I don't get is like the youngest one's more understanding. Um, okay. She's like, I know what you went through. I know what you know. Dad went through. You both were as bad as each other. Because I'm that kind of person who doesn't give up on an argument. Ah, right. I okay. have to have the last word all the time, and that was what cost me a lot of the domestic, like going into the domestic it's violence. A, it's, it's a poor situation, isn't it, to put your hands on someone because <laughs> it's like that's you see that in the movies. That's sort of the things they put in the movies. It'll be an argument. It, and then a guy and a girl and they're still going at it and then it's just, it, that's yeah, the go-to exactly. thing. You put it on the TV that the women can't keep, keep them off. Mouth shut, exactly. But so he, he had me thinking that for years that it was always because it was my fault because I always have a last word. 
it took me a few years to realize like hang on a minute you shouldn't have put my hands on me point blank why do you feel like you always had to have the last word where do you think that come from one i'm quite an argumentative person in general but more so because i knew in most cases in the argument that i was writing what i was saying and yeah. most of it was like to do with his behavior and not being around for the kids and stuff like that or just disappearing for a full weekend yeah so we were sort of like it's mad then so really you're raising good points and his way of dealing with it was just basically shut your mouth get the hands basically that was his that was his way of dealing pretty with it. much because he didn't want to wear it he didn't want to wear it and there was more things um like in the controlling sense of i still don't wear makeup to this day um because of the slurs that i used to hear from him when i was younger um he would literally point out girls in the street like who were pushing little kids in prams mm. like look at with all that makeup on looking like a slag trying to attract an next man uh, really? so it would basically take me aback and make me think well all right well i'll stop wearing makeup he'd say the same thing about wearing short skirts i still it's still to this day i find it hard to wear short skirts mm. all because i still hear the mental slurs in the back of my mind so so there's a lot of lasting damage from a domestic relationship so that's where the, like you say the ptsd kicks in it sounds like a lot it sounds a lot like he had a lot of his own issues and he was it's 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 an own thing in it a lot of people they have issues and they project them onto a lot of people say it's, it's usually the loved ones around him because he, he probably did love you didn't he um but he's got he's got you know he's, you think he was a bit insecure maybe or up to no good himself he was up to no good a few times that i found out about that he was in denial over well, he admitted one of them eventually. Um, and more so, it's sort of like, do you like when behaviour gets passed down? Mm, yeah. Um, his mum and dad used to be like that. Right, okay. When I very, very first like, met them, they used to be like, always arguing. His dad never put his hands on his mum, though. Okay. But obviously, I know that that's where the behaviour has been picked up yeah. from because he's been raised in that environment. Right, okay. It, like it doesn't excuse it but, but like you can there's see a, where there's it's a pattern from. yeah it's been taught he's seen it from young and it's kind of it's like a knock on it's so that's really, what it means so he's like okay so that's the way you treat a woman in a relationship yeah because that's, that's what, what he's that's led what, by that's example he's, wired up. he's seen that that's how it goes right okay them earrings are hard by the way so with the homelessness um before we actually sat down to have this interview you mentioned um a fella called Phil. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's quite comical. You shouldn't laugh, but you was laughing. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I feel like you should touch on it. Yeah, so um, while I was homeless, um, got into, I call it a situation ship, so okay. to speak. And um, I ended up getting about two grand back date from ESA. Mm. And he come running to me saying he's in trouble, he's got guys after him, blah, 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 blah took like this two grand off me to go and pay these guys off it was all a blag he just basically robbed me while i was already on my ass and homeless i was about to use that money for a deposit on my own yeah. flat and um about six months after this um we split up and then i heard down the grapevine that he died of cancer which he did have bowel cancer he was cleared of it and then all of a sudden apparently he's died of it um and then skipped about six months after that. Bizarrely, my not so dead ex was sat in a car as I'm walking down the street with my daughter, <laughs> um, Hannah. Then my daughter's had to come and collect me from outside the car because I was just dumbstruck at what I've just seen. And then a few weeks after that, it was like Karma had uh, already took care of business for me, so to speak. And he was in Piccadilly Gardens, sort of like begging for money himself. Oh, really? So, so yeah. So it like karma swings and roundabouts, really. Yeah, I didn't have to do anything about that situation in the end. Well, that's but I did lose two grand. Yeah, two grand down. Yeah, yeah that's a mad story. Like I say, when you when you said it to me before, like in any more circumstances, you wouldn't laugh at that, but <laughs> you, you deliver it in a in a comical like you, <laughs> you, see, like, you see light in it now, like you find it funny. Cause it is a, well, it's pretty funny, like, who actually walks down the road after finding out your ex is dead just to see him sat in the car? The way you explained it before as well was like, <laughs> yeah. 
bit of a mad one. Would you say so with him? You know, the two grand did that. Did that? What? How did that affect you? Like going forward, um, if that was for a set know, me back for a good couple of years. I ended up being in homelessness for longer than I should have been. I could have been out of homelessness for about four years. All right. Okay. Um, that two grand was going to be deposit on a private flat just to get me out, get me out of the situation. Because I was dumb enough to fall for a scam like that, I ended up being in a hostel system longer. So it did affect me financially and basically life span. Mm. Those three years, I can't get back, can I? <laughs> Would you say, did it affect you mentally? Yeah, it did really affect me mentally because it's now with all the issues I've had around men and relationships, so it's like and now have a zero trust policy. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, it's like another one. That's, that's what I mean. I've gone through like domestic violence, gone through like homelessness, gone through um, this uh, not so dead ex it's situation. Like a con man in a so way. So yeah, con man situation. So I'm like, right, well, okay. So I'm just not gonna get in a relationship anymore. Mm. It's much much easier. But it's it's sad. That it's there, sad, that it's sad to know made, that like I'm going to keep myself single to protect myself. It's sad, isn't it? It's like it, it sort of clearly affected you. Like, I missed, did you actually say how long you was with him before this happened? Um, I was with him for about eight months in total. Right, um, yeah. Before I actually finished him and then found out that he was not so dead. So long enough to sort <laughs> of... Yeah. Long enough to, long to, long long enough to feelings catch feelings and... Yeah. and uh, in surf flights, unfortunately. One of your lyrics, I think. One of my lyrics, potentially. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, I forget. I forget. Catch flights, not lyrics. feelings, is it? Catch flights, not, not cases. Feelings or not cases. Ca catch flights, not, not feelings cases. is what the birds say, the girls. I've seen yeah. it. Girls say it, and I said catch flights, not cases. Yeah, yeah that's um, it. But, sorry, my mind just went blank there because we started talking <laughs> about lyrics. Um, Phil, so yeah, going back to Phil, do you think... Um, let me pause for a minute to knock me off. <laughs> you knocked me off. I had something to ask you about him. It was interesting. Um, oh, yeah, that was it. So, so Phil, with the whole cancer thing as well, how long in, How long had you been with him before this sort of cancer? Did he already have it? When, it? when I got with him, um, about two months into the relationship is when he announced that he had the all clear. Oh, right, okay. And... Um, then like six months down the line, well, six months on the line, we split up and then I found out that he'd died of bowel cancer and I'm like, well, how do you die of something that you've already cleared of? Yeah. Did you not find that odd? Like if you're with him, like, I don't know, like, did you know his family? Was there like the funeral? Like all these sort of different aspects? And of that's it, what like, I mean, I, I was told, I was told there was a funeral. There's um, a few people, like a few mutual friends that we, no. So does a funeral and some of these mutual friends have gone to the funeral. But I do know he's that much of a comment is he has ripped other people off like thirty five K more. So basically, um a few years back he had a joint enterprise with a few of his friends, which is a joint lounge cafe in Manchester. Which I was a part of that, that as well. And um he ripped them off for about thirty five K took my 2k it was only when i spoke out about my 2k these guys have gone home and done a little mass homework and come back and found out they were 35k ah, so down red flags yeah check, out, check the books so we had a few people over so so it, so it was comment. it was actually in party pad when it all comes to head actually um okay. another little funny side story um when i told all my friends and his friends what exactly what had gone on He's rolled up to come and work at Party Pad one day at the Joint Lounge. We basically took all his merchandise off him, um, named him and shamed him for what he's done to me, taking money off someone that's already vulnerable and homeless. Yeah. Then named him and shamed him because we've already found out that he's took 35K plus from the business as well. And then it was about a couple of months after this when we found out apparently that he was... Um, died of cancer, bowel cancer. Now this is the bowel cancer that he was cleared of when I was with him. Mm. So even I was like, it's a bit dodgy this. And um, apparently there was a funeral and everything. I've actually looked into this. It only costs about three k for an average basic funeral. Mm. So what? Take thirty seven k off a few people. 
pay for a few months 3k you got 34k profit mm. mad story quite a crazy story yeah so <laughs> <laughs> quite interesting it's been through a lot loose <laughs> i know i have I've been through a lot it's a only lot 37 as well i'm dreading the last of my life no the, this is what we're going to touch on <laughs> this is where it gets better because obviously we've gone through coming up the domestic abuse the homelessness you know phil phil whoever you are mate, <laughs> you know. whoever you are, wherever you are right now phil hi um, <laughs> um, but yeah things have got better things have got a lot better definitely i got myself out of homelessness in october 2021 spent about a whole year decorating my whole flat myself uh, built myself a mini bar in the of building my own little mu mini music studio at the moment then this year, my New Year's resolution was to finally step up with my poetry and somehow I ended up doing a music production course in the last few weeks as well. Yeah, you did. <coughs> That's good. Like I say, we've, we've spoke, you have been doing a lot around music and you've been saying for years you've been wanting to get involved with it. Um, the poetry, you performed at Lab Live, your first, first attempt at it got over the anxiety, what we were talking about earlier, like we said. Um, so, yeah, I mean, poetry, spoken word, music course, radio. How do you think you feel? This is, again, going back to your dancing anxiety. It's the same sort of environment. It's crowds, it's, you know, public eye. So do you feel like you're going to think, right, I've been down, maybe not this route before, but I've been doing something I love. I've let the anxiety get a better of me. Are you ready to take it on this time? That's exactly what Lawless? that's exactly <laughs> what I am doing. I am taking it on this time, and that's why I'm creating this whole new persona, okay. so I can literally step up and do something that I really love again. Yeah. Um, I'm too old for dancing. And my knees can't take it no more. To be fair, so uh, we'll see what B Max so says. Um, in the video basically, she'll be dancing it next week. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> Yeah, I'm in a music video next week, aren't I? <laughs> um, forgot all about, all about that one. There you go. Then. Can't say with who though, because it's under wraps. You still under, I don't. I don't even know who's in it myself, to be honest. I don't know, but I just know obviously because we're in that group chat who's dancing and whatnot. Um, sorry, I bought in there. We'll go back to where let's rewind a bit. Oh, um, I ruined it the other week on Saturday. Got thrown in at the end scene. Yeah, I yeah. forgot I had my shoe covers on. Still on. Oh, in the shop. And JD. Why did, see, that's he his job as a cameraman. And then JD's like. locked down. He's like, oh. <laughs> and just moved on to filming someone else instead. Yeah, never mind. I was living with myself, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting around the anxiety. Um, poetry. So what have you got coming up? What's been going um, on like, with that? Because I know, like you say, you performed here. Well, from my first little minute performance here, um, I've now got myself booked at Pull Up Cafe um, okay. in Manchester for Pull Up and Speak, which oh is a yeah. monthly event on the 27th of February, 6 p.m. till 10 p.m. Um, thanks to Sharon for inviting me to come and perform. And then the month after, on the 23rd of March, I'll be right here at Mouth Event um, performing as well. Hosted by LOL. Yep, <laughs> from 7 p.m. till 10.30. Okay. And from there, I've also got a comedy stand-up comedy gig, but I don't think I want to tell you the date because I might fail at that. So. No, you won't. <laughs> comedy is, I suppose, it's, it's 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 miles away from spoken word, isn't it? But I suppose with you now, just just getting up on stage, regardless if you're good at comedy or not, it's just it's just getting used to being on stage, being in front of a crowd. That's just something to work on in itself. Exactly. If I can do it at stand-up comedy and make a fool of myself. Then when you're going to go then down the route, what's something you I enjoy? can do it in future for all yeah. my performances. What are you good at poetry? Because you are good at poetry. Um, so yeah, like I said, it looks like you've got, you know, you've come a long way from 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 where you once was. Would you like to um, would you like to do a piece? Are you feeling? <laughs> yeah, I can do a piece. We'll finish on this one because it is sort of another little funny story of my life in my teenage years. Okay. Um, I'm literally, I'm throwing a disclaimer in because you can't get trialed and um, trial for the same crime twice. I was acquitted back at age 15 of this. <laughs> um, so this is called High School Blazer. 
and um, I wrote it for Paul Prince B, comma 27th of February. <coughs> High school blazer. High school, who remembers those days? The teenage years, such an awkward phase. Age 14, I was having one of those days, being the class clown and misbehaved. Sent to headmaster's office, so as I left, smiled and waved. Skipped out, report card in hand. Now I sat waiting for headmaster to see me. But you know me, I get bored easily. Pulls lighter out and starts fucking about. Puts a flame near laminated report card. It ignites a fireball of light so pretty and bright. Then melted plastic drips on my skin. At that moment, I felt my sin and dropped it in the bin. And then took off running. I'm a fire starter, twisted fire starter. Fire alarm starts so I head to assembly point outside. Acting dumb but cool as fuck, but really, I'm petrified. Fire service arrives, puts the fire out, and we all ushered back inside. I go back to class thinking I'm a criminal mastermind, but that thought was badly timed. Headmaster and three police officers at the classroom door. Words I heard as handcuffs put on me, chilled me to the core. Lucy, you're arrested for arson. You do not have to say anything more. My head down, head down, eyes to the floor, but then the whole class in uproar. A few of them chanted as I walked in cuffs by police to the door. She's a fire starter, twisted fire starter. <laughs> Luce. <laughs> Watch this. What a life journey I've been through, the less you experience it, you ain't gonna clue. Believe me when I tell you it's not for the faint hearted. Not surprised, a lot of my friends a long time ago departed.